On this Charge Overland adventure, we head to Flagstaff, Arizona for the Overland Expo. En route, we try out multiple Rivian Adventure Network charging stations, test the limits of the Rivian's range, and at the show, get to check out a variety of different Rivian builds. We also get out and explore a short hike in Sedona. Plus, I'll share all the details of our charging stops throughout this nearly 1,000 mile trip. Stay tuned. Our trip began in Southern California and we were leaving on a weekday, which meant we were able to enjoy a pretty smooth, traffic-free drive for the first portion of our journey. Our first stop was at a Rivian Adventure charging station in Barstow, California. And throughout this video, I'll be showing you all of my stats for each leg of the journey, as well as my state of charge when I leave a charging station and arrive at my next location. For this stop, I set the charging percentage at the extended range, which is 85%, because we had a decent number of miles to cover before we reached our next stop. As we were charging, I spotted a couple other Rivians, and these weren't just your average trucks. These were the Rivians that debuted at SEMA a few months ago, and it was really cool to see them in person. I got to check them out a lot closer though when I got to the show. So it's showing 212 miles, and it says charging required, so let's see if we can make it with what we've got, which is 271 miles of range, should be plenty, but it's saying charging required. So let's see how we do. Throughout the first hour or so of our trip, the Rivian was showing that we still weren't going to have any battery when we arrived at our next stop, and I was starting to think we were going to have to make an unplanned charging stop along the way. With about two hours left in the drive though, the computer updated and showed 21 miles of range on arrival, and that number actually continued to climb as we made our way to Kingdom. All right, we just pulled up to the charger in Kingman, and we've got 36 miles, 11% battery. So for this portion of the journey, we covered 206 miles and used 74% of the battery. Our efficiency was actually pretty good as well, considering most of this drive was gradually uphill. At this point in the drive, we were both pretty hungry, so we got some dinner and it was also really hot. So we thought it was a good idea to grab a little ice cream as well to cool down. By the time we got back to the truck, it was basically done charging. This was our longest charging stop, however. We were there for about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, we are in Kingman, Arizona. Just finished up our final charging stop along our route, and we are headed to Flagstaff, Arizona. Going to be at the Overland Expo for the whole weekend, and really just stoked to get out and explore Flagstaff, check out some cool trucks, some cool Overland rigs, and uh, hopefully meet some awesome people as well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're gonna get on the road here. We're almost done with this drive. Just a couple hours left to Flagstaff. As the sun was going down, we started to see some pretty awesome lightning off in the distance. 
and eventually caught up with the storm. Our last hour or two of this drive was in heavy rain, but we eventually made it into Flagstaff and this last leg of the drive was 146 miles and we arrived with 30% charge. This wrapped up the first half of our journey. We covered 455 miles and our efficiency was just under two miles per kilowatt hour. So you'll notice that we're staying at a hotel for this trip and not camping at the expo. And there's a quick backstory here. So I bought an iCamper rooftop tent about half a year ago and have been using it on a bunch of my adventures. And just recently, iCamper reached out to me and wanted to start working on some collaboration. I've been a huge fan of their brand and the product, so of course I said yes. So they sponsored this trip to Overland Expo in exchange for having my truck at their booth. And I'll be testing out and using some of their products in future videos, so be on the lookout for that. All right, back to this trip. The hotel we were staying at had a couple free charging stations, which was great because it allowed me to top off charge on the truck before the weekend. The next morning, the truck was charged up to 85%, ready for the weekend. And the last thing I had to do was give it a quick wash. And I saw quite a few other trucks getting prepped for Overland Expo. With the truck all set up at Overland Expo, but the show not opening till the next day, Christina and I decided to make the short drive down to Sedona, Arizona, and check out one of the many amazing hikes that are in that area. The hike we did here is called Bell Rock Loop, and this is a pretty relaxed two mile trail, and it gave us a chance to soak up some of the awesome Sedona scenery just before sunset. The next morning was the first day of Overland Expo and let's just say the weather was not ideal. It was cold and rainy, but we still decided to get to the show and check things out. So one of my first stops was to head over to the Optima Batteries booth and check out these two very built out Rivians. These trucks are loaded up with gear and they've got some pretty cool aftermarket parts from a company called DCE or Direct Current Engineering. They also had one of the few aftermarket wheels I've seen on Rivians from Black Rhino 
And I talked to them separately and it sounds like there'll be more wheels coming out for Rivian in the next few months, so looking forward to that. There were also a couple electric dirt bikes from a company called Cake. The design of these is very cool and it's awesome to see more brands starting to explore the possibilities of electric powertrains. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think of these Rivians. Is it too much aftermarket gear or would you want to build out your truck just like this? After walking around the show for a bit, we were starting to get a little cold. We made our way back to the iCamper booth and Arvin, one of the iCamper ambassadors, just happened to be cooking up some hot chili and I gotta say it really hit the spot. Day two, the clouds were looming, but they ended up holding off and we had a beautiful day to walk around the show. Here's a quick glimpse at the scale of trucks, vendors, and people that show up to Overland Expo. I checked out this Rivian at the Thule booth and they have a platform rack system that looks pretty cool. There were also a few other small aftermarket vendors that are starting to build rack systems for the Rivian. This one is from a company called Range Industries and it actually integrates very nicely with the Rivian mounting points. It got me thinking about maybe lifting my iCamper up to be able to organize more gear on the side. I definitely tried to focus my time on the Rivians that were at this show, but there are a ton of cool vehicles here to check out from vans to trucks to RVs, massive buses. It's really a great space to see the range of vehicles that are used in overlanding. And beyond that, it's awesome to meet a ton of people who share the same passion for getting out and having adventures. Throughout the weekend, I had the chance to hang out with Michael from Conquest Overland. He just recently switched to a Grand Cherokee 4xe and is dipping his toes into the electric space. And we definitely plan on heading out on an adventure together in the very near future. The expo wrapped up on Sunday around 3 p.m. And the truck had been there for just over three days and had lost 10% battery. I had been in and out of it and wasn't able to use the stay off mode for this specific weekend. So the battery drain was about what I expected. After getting packed up, it was time to head out and start the drive back to California. All right, just after four o'clock, we are at 69% state of charge just left Overland Expo and heading to Kingman, Arizona for the first charging stop on the way back home. Just got to Kingman and at 22% state of charge. And there's the stats for that leg of the trip. The route back was just a reverse of the way I had come to Flagstaff. So the first leg was Flagstaff to Kingman. And I planned on charging as much as I could in Kingman. That way I could just do a quick stop in Barstow on my way back home.
I arrived in Barstow around 10.30 p.m. and I had made pretty good time from Kingman. My charging stop here, I was just trying to keep as short as possible so I could get home before it got super late. So I just charged the truck up to a minimum where I felt comfortable getting home and having a few miles of range left. So I arrived with 14% and I charged up to 48% and this only took about 24 minutes. The last leg of the trip was the 112 miles back to Irvine. I got home around 12.30 at night. Here are the final stats for the trip. The overall journey took us through the Rivian charging station in Barstow, the Rivian charger in Kingman, as well as the free charger at our hotel in Flagstaff. And then we reversed that route. Here are the total trip stats. And since the Rivian chargers are free, if you have a Rivian and the hotel charger was free, I actually spent $0 on charging for this whole trip. That wraps up the trip to Overland Expo. Thanks for watching everyone. And as always, more adventures coming your way.